Alrighty ho, so before we go to the next whiskey, I'm going to um, talk to you a little bit more uh, about John, a bit more about his background, not just about the actual whiskies we're tasting. So, um, obviously John likes his whiskey, uh, you know that I'm a tour guide, but John for a little while worked up on Speyside, I think he lived up on Speyside as well, and he was involved in the spirit of a Speyside Whiskey Festival. So, John, what did you do? How long did you do it? Tell us a little bit more about it. Yeah, well, uh, it was um, it was the best almost year of my life. Uh, it was about ten months or so there thereabouts. Uh, very lucky enough to be offered the chance to manage the Spirit of Speyside Whiskey Festival for that period of time. Um, and yeah, lived up in Elgin. In fact, lived on Glen Murray Distillery for uh, ten months, um, which was uh, nothing short of amazing. Um, lived up on the top of the hill. If anyone knows uh, Glen Murray at all, up in um, uh, Hatton Hill House, uh, which was uh, which was the old distillery manager's house uh, before Graham Cool uh, arrived and took residence in the the, the hill at the the hill the hill the house at the bottom of the hill. Um, but yeah, it's it was it was fantastic. It was brilliant just living up there. It was a brilliant experience in the 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 history, the surroundings, the the um, the, the passion everyone's got about the, the wonderful whiskey they produce. Um, I think I mentioned earlier on that biggest uh, whiskey producing region in Scotland, um, 50, 50 plus distilleries. Usually about 60, I think there's about 130 in Scotland yep. and about half on space. Yeah, yeah. so, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it, it, was, it was wonderful. I mean, the, the, the festival itself is unique um, and the way they... The way they conduct it. Um, I, it when, what, what is the festival? So how many yeah. days is it? On either the festival, each distillery has a day. Yes. But there's only eight or nine now distilleries. They can't do that with space So what's the what's the format of the festival? Yeah, so it's five days. Um, or I believe it's been uh, increased to six uh, since I, I uh, parted ways. But um, the, the, the format is that every distillery in space pretty much every distillery in space but also business, uh, in space as well the the um the host events uh over the course of those those five or six days uh you can buy tickets for these events go along to them um i believe this year they're doing it virtually uh which is which is great um uh, uh, molding and shaping themselves around the, the current situation that we find ourselves in but uh, during my time uh the uh the, the it was uh it was over well over 600 events uh, across the length and breadth of space and that was um, five days. Uh, yes, uh, <laughs> and obviously you can't you can't do them all. Right. Uh, but whatever your taste, whatever your pleasure was, uh, whatever you want to experience, you could do that. Um, and it was from a simple, um, I say simple tour of a distillery uh, that you can do every other day. Um, some of the distilleries that aren't open to the public open their doors. Um, so you could go along and, and experience that, likes of Mortlach and um, uh, various other distilleries that, that people are desperate to visit because the whiskey is so good uh, and the reputation goes far and wide. Um, but yeah, it just gives us opportunity for people to go along and, and visit and, and appreciate the 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 kind of the the um, the, the atmosphere and the 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 as I say mentioned earlier on the, the passion uh, for for the product they, they produce. Uh, and yeah, as far far south as Canusi with um, uh, Speyside Distillery down there, right up to Elgin uh, in the in the north, across the forests and the 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 west, and and it over to Keith in the in the west. It was a massive footprint with um with lots and lots and lots of uh, of let's see not just distilleries but businesses, hotels, restaurants, um uh, yeah everyone everyone participating and uh, it was just a fantastic place to be. Um, so what did actually manage in it? What did that involve? It, it managed. Uh, it, I I managed the the um uh, the general uh, running of it. So pulling pulling the 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 website together, making sure all the the the, the events were were well uh, positioned, um, making sure all the events were um. Uh, uh, Publicised. Correct. Yes. So PR, um, all of the the media stuff, um, making sure all of the spirit of space side events were were um, well managed. Uh, so we had a, an opening dinner, uh, which had the great and good of the whiskey world descending upon space side for 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 this this uh, this dinner, which was where was that. Uh, that the year that I managed it was a Bell uh, Ben Romich distillery, um, and they had a. 
a marquee out on the uh, between uh, warehouse number one and the the uh, the the uh, cask filling um, house, um, and yeah, it was uh, just a wonderful place to be for for that period of time. And and yeah, the opening dinner, uh, and then followed by an opening Kaylee, um, and then right at the very end of the the festival, uh, a closing Kaylee uh, at uh, Craig Ellerkey Hotel uh, in the the um, the car park of 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 the hotel, which was. Another fine night, uh, and I was blessed, or we, we were all blessed at the time to have fantastic weather, uh, which me makes, uh, uh, yeah. If we had fantastic weather all the time, not 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 saying that rain in Scotland is not a, not a, not a good thing, but um, yeah, today's yeah. rain is tomorrow's whiskey. But you're touching one of my little bugbears. The weather in Scotland's fine. Exactly, sun, sun exactly. Yeah, yeah. I take a bit of sun in the, in the face today. It's, it's not always bad. So, <laughs> uh, but but we need rain what I say rain one day a week maybe two days a week and that gives you enough for whiskey and for your shower in the morning your glass of water but yeah you, you want a bit of sunshine as well uh, so what, So about ten months you were there for, yeah. for a five day festival yeah yeah um, but it, there, there was a lot of um, uh, of course the festival just doesn't run uh, through my efforts alone there was there was a <laughs> Uh, a, a, a whole host of uh, different people involved. Um, the, the the board of directors were all voluntary, uh, all coming from the whiskey industry or um, businesses surrounding, um, and uh, yeah, making sure that that um, the the businesses and and the the distilleries alike were uh, had their their own uh, say in what was going on, um, but also uh, making sure that just in general the space side was being promoted in the way that everyone wanted it to be. Um, but yeah, for me it was um, it was a fantastic experience, and uh, yeah, ten months I'll never forget. Uh, you're going to make a few contacts. You're going to taste a few whiskeys, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, uh, and obviously seen some of the distilleries that aren't always open to the public. Mm. Uh, the one that sprung mind you mentioned, more like I think Ben Reich. Is that one that's not usually open to the public, but it's quite a well-known distillery? But ben Reich uh, wasn't open to the public at that stage, but now they've just recently opened up their, their visitor centre now, so you can actually go along and get um, uh, tours and and uh, visit the, the distillery. Uh, but yeah, at the time it was one of these kind of holy grail distilleries that people wanted to visit, but mm. never could. Um, you know, um, uh, Manic Moore and uh, various other uh, uh, Pernod Ricard distilleries that you you drive past on the way up to to Elgin, that you 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 think, oh, I wonder what it's going to be like in there. And um, yeah, it's uh, it's it, 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 we 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 helped open the doors uh, to to those distilleries and. Helped uh, make them make them accessible for that short period of time, which made it that bit more special. Good stuff. So, if you could pick it immediately off the top of your head, one or two top highlights, best whiskey you tried, or best person you met, or best hmm. place you had a whiskey, or what, what, any one or two highlights like that. Um. Well, the, the, I was lucky enough to um, uh, participate in a few events um, over the course of the the five days that, that were there, myself and um, my wife, and and we uh, we we participated in one of the. Uh, nominated events um, of the festival as uh, one of the, the things that, that we, we, we did, one of the newcomers to the festival, one of the, the new events, it was the best new event uh, and uh, one of uh, the Whiskey Great and Good as I said, um, a very well known person in the industry, Blair Bowman, um, created a, a, a whiskey walk um, along the, the Spey, um, but not during the day, uh, it was uh, in the middle of the night. <laughs> And during the, the walk, uh, we were um, given various cocktails and uh, various surprises along the way and tasted some fantastic whiskey as he pulled um, cocktails from the spay uh, that he had pre-made and, and cast out into the spay to cool down and pulled them in. And just a wonderful experience uh, crossing the Craig Ellicky Bridge at, um, at uh, stupid o'clock in the morning to, to uh, have a whiskey. It was, uh, it was, uh, it was really good. Yeah, that's the old uh, Iron Bridge. The that correct, yeah, there. yeah. Well, the, one of the uh, there was the old old crossing um, across the across the, the spay uh, before obviously the new road bridge has now been mm -hmm. installed. But um, that was a highlight. That was fantastic. Um, some some wonderful whiskies. Um, some wonderful conversations with um, your um, your Dave Brooms and your Charlie McLeans and uh, Hans Offringas and all the greater good of whiskey. Uh, yeah, it was. I was. Um, and your John Blythe. <laughs> an absolute no one. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, an enthusiastic amateur at best. Uh, yeah, it was it was a wonderful experience and one that will never 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 trade for anything. But um, yeah, 
Very good. Whiskey's out of the space sounds good. I mean, I, I like my fishing and salmon out of the space is good, but whiskey out of the space probably more. Ah, if you could buy a permit, <laughs> would you like a fishing permit or would you like uh, a whiskey permit? I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll go fishing for One of, the, one of the, the, the other, sorry, apologies, and things are just springing to my mind as I go, but um, I was very lucky to, to be uh, given one of the first um, tours of the new Macallan distillery um, before it opened to the public um, and felt um, very. Uh, privileged to be in that situation as I received my letter uh, through the post um, inviting me along to a, a pre-tour um, of, of the distillery itself and this hype and anticipation that was uh, of the uh, the Teletubbies house that they, they built up in, up in Speyside across yes. the Spey. Um, it, it's nothing short of incredible what they've done and uh, and yeah, the, the setup they've got and actually the longevity as well. They've thought about uh, the future. Mm -hmm. uh, and up, up in the, the the whiskey production, and actually built and thought about that, which is which is incredible. Yeah, it's, it's, um, a, it's a dodgy subject to wade into is the, the new McCallum Distillery because <laughs> uh, it's a classic, love it, hate it. Some people think it's atrocious. Some people think it's the best thing hmm. possible, and it is. It's both. It's it's everything. It's it's a, it's. You have to visit it. Um, it doesn't mean that you like it, but you might love it, but you might hate it, but you have to visit it. Um, not like any other distillery, modern, there's got turf on the roof, it's all eco, it's all, uh, as John says, looking at the future, but at the same time it's, it's it's almost too big a step at once for everybody else to to, to, to come to terms with. Um, it's certainly an incredible place. Yeah, I mean, I, the, the other, uh, one one more then I'll shut up, I promise. No, no. That's <laughs> why you're here, John. Um, <laughs> Uh, the, the one of the tastings we did was was one of the um, the other uh, things we, we did during the festival was uh, was the, uh, the 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 whiskey awards um, various categories from various distilleries the the um, submitted uh, whiskey for for a, an award that, that's given out at the end of the, the festival itself um, one of the the final tastings we did for that was at Forsyth the the um, the, uh, the the copper um, stills it's stills yeah, yeah they make yeah. their stills and in the Rothes. Uh, correct that's correct so we're in the actual um, Forsyth uh, office building right at the very top floor it's it's very very nice and they were very kind enough to let us use that for the tasting itself but a part of the deal was that we could allow people to go down and tour. The, the the copper smiths themselves. I take it they don't normally do that. No, uh, no. Right, right. Um, so you can drive into the yard, I believe, which I think is maybe you can maybe pass it off as a wrong turn and go. Oh, oh. Oops, sorry. I'll I'll uh, I'll drive back out again. And you can see the stills and you can see things, but the the, the one for us that was that was quite special is that we saw the pagoda roof uh, ready to be put on the new still house at Glenfiddich. Oh, Glenfiddich. Um, and actually, funny you should say that as well, because when we were there for a tour uh, of Forsyth, um, one of my first tours of Forsyth, um, they, they showed me a, a scale model of the new still setup at McAllen, because they did all the stills at McAllen. Uh, and it's in this circular um, setup, uh, it's, it's just beautifully made. Um, tiny little stills, but just fabulous in the way it's constructed, and they, they made it as a presentation thing for the distillery itself and on completion so I'm sure you can probably see it in the distillery today but it's um it was some sight but uh, anyway I've probably talked too much oh, no, about it's, it's quite, me but um yeah insight. yes um so any plans to run any other whiskey festivals at any point I, I, who knows what's going to come around the corner who knows I, I would love to get back into the industry um love to do something within the industry again my, my background is marketing events and marketing I should say now but um, my background is marketing so if you are a whiskey producer out there <laughs> they want someone to come and market their whiskey for you I'm, I'm your man um, but no, no 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 plans to do anything different now but um, yeah you never well, know yeah, never seen well, it the whiskey world is uh, it's evolving it's developing uh, opportunities that we don't even know about now might surface in the next year or two who knows you never know uh, good stuff right well um, a little bit about John's background in the whiskey there and you can see I've still got empty glasses so we're going to get back and do a, a little bit more whiskey tasting bit of talking not enough drinking type another whiskey my turn again so John Let's see what you make of this one. Looking forward to it. Would you like to have a hazard a guess as to where it comes from? It's <laughs> um. <laughs> it's a Lowland. Next whiskey is this one here. 
And you'll find this one on a um, Whiskey Tour Guide Keith Taste and Review. And this is uh, another Isla Whiskey. Classic, this is from a mystery distillery. The Finlagan name is a brand name and it is from the Glasgow Malt Whiskey uh, Company, I think it is. Give me a second. Vintage Malt Whiskey, sorry, company, who are based in Glasgow. Now, in my opinion, these are excellent value Isla single malts. You're looking at 45 to 50 pounds a bottle. And this is the Finlagan Red Wine Cask Matured, which comes in at 46%, so decent enough. Have a little look at that, John. Have a little read of the bottle. I'll read it out loud. Tell tell the, the good people at home what is all involved with this one. Okay, well, um, let's have a look. So um, we are red wine cast matured. Very interesting. 46% distilled matured and bottled in Scotland, as you would hope and expect. Although there is no distillery at Finlagan Castle, uh, this ancient home of the Lord of the Isles lends its name to one of the island's finest malt whiskies. Very interesting. Did you go to Finlagan when you were I there? unfortunately didn't. You should have gone to Isla with a tour guide. This is, this is, <laughs> this is it's a, um, basic mistake. Uh, yeah, so Finlagan, Loch Finlagan. In the loch are a couple of islands. There was a little sort of township and the castle. And right next to it was the council island. So Island Moor, big island, Moor in Gaelic is big. Island Moor was the big island where people lived in the castle. The, the Lord of the Isles had his home. And the council island is where he would get all the sort of clan chiefs underneath him. They'd all come in. They'd have their meetings there, thrash out the business of the day. What I like so much about Finlagan is that you've got this um, the seat, the home of the Lord of the Isles, on an island, in a loch, on an island, in the sea. So if you're going to attack, you sort of get your boats in, then you would to lug them onto land, then you would get your boats in and lug them onto land, and they've seen you coming long before <laughs> you get there. Um, how's your Scottish history, John? Uh, not the best. You should come on a tour uh, uh, with well, a tour guide. If only I knew one. <laughs> <laughs> I know a few good ones, so I'll point you in that direction. Very good. So, uh, yes, so we're talking, I think, we're looking at 1100s through to, I think, the 1500s, the Lord of the Isles. Really underneath the Scottish King, but a bit of an independent Western Islands um, sort of renegade kingship, if you like. So that's where the name Finlagan comes from. Anyone who's been to Isla, most people who go there go by boat, and one of the ferries that takes you is also called Finlagan. That's the, 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 the nicer of the two. It's the more modern of the two, the two boats that go back and forward on the route. Have you had any Finlagan whiskey before? This will be my first. Very good. Uh, well, why don't you pour it? Do oh, the honours. Yes, very much. Uh, have a little sniff of the bottle. So red wine cast ma matured, as uh, John said, so a little bit unusual. And uh, this is one of their core range. I've tried the port wine mature, I've tried their standard as well. Okay, so on the nose. Quite a fresh one this. Sweet. The last whiskey we tried had a real sugary, crusty sweetness. This one's more of a sort of fruit, I'd say a fruit burst, fruity sort of sweetness. Quite fresh, so fresh. Nice. It's got no, it's got no, it's not angry at all. It's not, you're not thinking this is really strong. You're not thinking this is really peaty or smoky. It's, it's quite an interesting one on the nose. That is, it's, um, it's kind of similarities to the, the first whiskey we tried, the, um, I've completely forgotten what the first whiskey was. It's kind of, it's kind of a That's right, yeah. It's kind of got a similar, similar sort of nose to that in the fact that the, there's almost kind of a red fruit, sweetness coming from it but not so much jammy but more the sort of see red fruit but maybe almost no, stone, I didn't, stone I didn't, fruit i didn't get much of the jam in the, the scarabus but i get a lot more about there yeah jam yeah yeah so it's that so when you say stone fruit you, you're talking more like peach plums like peachy plum plummy sort of mm, i wouldn't go as much peach i wouldn't go as that sort of floral side but certainly mm. plum um it's good though oh it's fabulous that's, in the nose it's that, lovely that's the red wine so for a, a standard non-age statement single malt, not from a named di distillery, does not disappoint on the nose. Um, Have you got any inklings as to which distillery it would be? Well, uh, again, being a tour guide, you hear all the time people say, oh, we did Sky or oh, we did Isla. It's like, well, you've been once. 
when you're the tour guide, you, you get to go month after month, year after year, different times of year, different seasons, and you start to get to know people, the characters, and uh, you start to pick up little bits of knowledge here and there. As a general rule, any Isla mystery distillery whiskey comes from Kalila because Kalila produced the most single malt whiskey on um, on the island. Uh, so Kalila's the default. I did get a little bit of uh, information in the pub one night. There was a previous Finlag and it was the pork cask Fajila that I've reviewed in another video. And in my estimation, it was possibly a Lafroig or a Lagavulin. And the barman told me his father worked at Lagavulin and it wasn't a Lagavulin. So I'm quite sure they're not Lagavulin. Um, they're not mm. up on who sells what and who buys what. But it's not hard to tell now the fact that they've, they've is it finished? It's finished in a uh, red wine cask or is it red wine matured? Okay, red so wine cask matured. So they've got the spirit. Mm. Taken away, put it in the red wine barrels and produce this. Might even be four or five years old. Mm. Anyway, lovely on the nose, fruit sweet, juicy fruit sweet. You had a little. I had a little taste. taste. Sorry, apologies. Whilst you were talking well, there, um, well, I got I'll carried have, away. Well, I'll have, I'll have taste <laughs> Tell the good people mm. what you think of it. So. Backing up what the nose is telling us, the fact that there is a lot of um, red fruit sweetness coming through, but also that stone fruit, um, plummy notes coming through as well. Um, the, the the smoke is definitely there. There's no, there's no, there's, more there's smoke no getting away mouth. from it. Yeah. yeah, there is more smoke in the red than the nose. I would charred smoke yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I wouldn't say an earthy peaty, it's more that burnt charred, charcoal, charred wood. Slightly dry, it's like a dry, dry note to it, but I've, I've tasted a, a fair amount of uh, wine uh, matured or wine finished whiskies, and for this one as well, I, I I I would have probably said it would be more of a sort of a port finish or port uh, matured because it's got that sort of um, uh, note. But it's definitely a winey feature about it. Um, but no, it's it's lovely. It's fabulous. I mean, it's <laughs> it's it's very well balanced, very well rounded. Mm -hmm. um, it, the, the, it is dry, definitely dry, but the, the, there's there, there's no yeah there's it's, it, got, it's got a good linger as well. Yeah, there's right. Good, there's yeah. too quick. There is a, a nice finish there. I would say um, it's, it's not it, a long finish. It's not uber sophisticated. It's not um, massively complex, but it gives you enough to keep you mm -hmm. interested in um, a bit of taste bud sensation. Yep, it's it's a, a fabulous dram. I mean, it's it's there's no. If you like your islas, and I like my islas. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> um, I, I like them too, don't get me wrong, I, I do. But, um, there's that. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, you, you do say when you're, you're, you are appreciating whiskey, um, it's 70% of the, the, the appreciation comes to the nose and the, the palate then backs it up. But th there is that, th there is virtually Virtually no smoke on the nose. There is a yeah. little bit there, mm -hmm. but then. Hey, before I finish it, I'll put a little bit of water in. So if you throw mm -hmm. each other across. Mm -hmm. um, as I say, I've reviewed this one, but I can't remember what I thought with the water. I'm going to go for three whole drops of water. John can chuck a little bit more in. I'll uh, I'll, 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 I'll jug I'll jug I'll slug mine in. <laughs> there you go. You're a bit more smoke in the nose now, uh, and you, you never know if it's in your head or if it's actually coming into your head through your nose. But there's more maritime notes, I would say. That's yeah, this it's totally must come through right now. Yeah. yeah, there is um, there is a lot of more, well, not a lot more, but there's a bit more smoke coming Definitely. through your nose no, now. I would say that pushing, but, but, but on the cusp of more to a lot more, mm. it really is. There's it, there's a noticeable amount more smoke. Citrusy, slightly citrus note as well on there. Mm. In the palate, a bit of lemony maybe. Mm. It's good to wait. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's um, that, it, the, with water itself, it's it's. It, 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 the, the smoke is still there, but it's kind of um, balancing off on the nose now as well. So you're getting it on the nose, but you're getting it on the palate as well. That 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 
jammy red fruit flavours, a big punch through there, a big punch of sweetness still. I'm um, going to be a bit less sweetness really, uh, when I, I the water. It's, um, I put a lot more water in, mind you. Sorry, do we have to finish at the same time? No, <laughs> we'll, we'll coordinate that in the future. Okay, future yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, that is that is a, a fabulous drop in my first introduction for Lagging as well. So that, that's uh, a lovely way to start my... That's the third or fourth one I've tried and mm. I've not been disappointed once. It's so, if you like your either whiskies, if you like your fruity whiskies, certainly have mm. a little look at the Finlagen. Okay, so next on our whiskey journey for this video, it's back to John's choice. So let's see what he's going to pull out of the bag. Drum roll. <laughs> right, uh, next on the line is Astrathern. Uh, now this is uh, batch number one uh, from Strathern. So um, brand new distillery, well, brand new. Um, it says on the label here, first distilled 2013. As far as I was concerned, they were founded in 2013 uh, and they started distilling in 2016, but I might be wrong. Um, according to this, I am wrong, so we'll leave it at that. Um, but yeah, uh, non-chill filter, natural colour, which, um, and, and well, I've not told you as well, it's a three-year-old. So very, very young whiskey. Well, read the bottle. So um, sorry, yeah. Four, yeah. yeah. So um, Strathairn, first distilled, 2013, is 46.6% uh, ABV, single malt uh, whiskey, non-chill filtered, natural colour, sweet and sherried. Um, product of uh, Strathairn Distillery, it's batch number one, small batch, handcrafted. Uh, now, um, Obviously, it's sherry. It must be sherry casks. It is. It is uh, sherry casks. Yeah. What's and your opinion on the the chill filtered, non chill filtered? Any opinions? Um, well, well, no, no real opinion. I mean, uh, the chill chill filtration was was brought in. Well, I might be wrong again. As I say, uh, enthusiastic amateur here, um, but for potential, potentially solely for the the group of people who think that uh, instantly you put water ice. Um, anything uh, cool into a, a whiskey, it turns cloudy. Uh, if there is uh, no, um, if there's a non, if it's non-chill filtered, uh, and instantly these people think that there's something wrong with the whiskey, it's defective. Excuse me, there's something wrong with my Correct. whiskey. Correct. No. Uh, it's not the case. Um, it's uh, it's the 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 fatty enzymes, I believe, or fatty stuff. <laughs> in the whiskey natural oils Keith might yes. yeah, there you go um, so yeah it, it's them reacting to the cool temperatures uh, the impurities and, and, yeah so uh, that's what makes the, the whiskey cloudy and non chill filtration so chill filtration takes all that out so for the likes of our American cousins uh, when they're putting their, their on the rocks ice uh, um uh, in in their whiskey, the uh, obviously it's not uh, turning the 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 whiskey cloudy. Um, so yeah, that that's that's my understanding. I think that's it. It's just an aesthetic thing as much as anything, and a marketing thing. But increasingly, as people have become more innovative with whiskey, there's a lot more people who prefer not um, non chill filtered, just as it comes out of the barrel. I don't think it really changes the flavour in any way, shape, or form. I would be wrong, but. It probably does um, um, Yeah, I don't, I don't yeah, think significantly. Yeah. Yeah, um, so it doesn't say on the bottle here, but it is actually three years old. Um, so it's uh, it's a, a, a very young whiskey. Um, but Just a wee point. Distillers, stop being so coy. Just put the age statement on it. We're growing up, we're, we can handle it now. If you've still got a problem with a single digit age statement whiskey the problem is not with the distillers or the age of the whiskey the problem is with you so yeah put the, put the age in the whiskey three years four years five years three and a half years put it on um so it says here an, an, an unashamedly young yet surprisingly mature well, see it unashamedly but it is shamedly because they're not the three years <laughs> um at least i don't think they'll put the three years on no, definitely no, not no. definitely not um but yeah on the website it says three years but anyway um single malt at three years old there we go it says it on the label <laughs> back of the bottle back of the bottle no uh interesting and uh distinctive in flavor where young handcrafted spirit meets only the finest european oak and ex sherry casks uh, soft and mellow oak uh, makes up for the back makes up the backbone of this dram, allowing a platform for red fruits and subtle sweetness. 
of X Sherry casks to shine through dynamic and new young whiskey at its finest. I just want to hold it up just to make sure people can see the colour. So for a three year old, bourbon casks and then sherry matured. So you'd have to guess two years and one year or two and a half years and six months, but that's a decent colour for a three year old. Yeah, yeah. So I can only assume it's small casks. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know much about them, but I, I believe they're quite, quite a sort of crafty distillery, hand crafty. Mm. They like to do things by hand. Um, so that like they are quite hands on. So uh, ah, the colour is quite impressive. Yeah, I, I mean for for three years, I mean that's incredible. And there's absolutely no added uh, colour to it. Is maybe something you've explained previously, but um, uh, quite a lot of uh, across the whiskey industry, there are uh, it's some in some cases to um, add consistency to to to. Shop bought whiskey, um, there are curl the colours at an E150, I believe it's called. Yeah, it's some sort of caramel, um, colour, yeah. caramel colour, uh, which is completely flavourless, uh, but adds a colour to the whiskey. Um, my, my first experience yeah. with that was um, Germans coming across, and in Germany, oh, you one. must list if you've added the caramel colour and the, the, the added coloration to the whiskey. Over here, we don't have to. Mm. Uh, and, and, I understand sort of why they do, they don't need to, but they do, but it's, uh, I like that the Germans do get that, that information, something, let, let us know what's in the whiskey, let us decide for ourselves, and ultimately you're going to put it in your mouth, and you're going to decide that way, so all the rest is good backup information, I can, I, 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 I could be a good whiff of that, that's <laughs> very interesting smell yeah. that. Uh, and once again, for three for three years old, it's uh, is incredible. So you're expecting a, a young young whiskey. You're expecting um, you know, grassy grassy notes, cereal notes coming through from that. Maybe that prickle heat that comes through from any young whiskey. But I need, I'm going to need some new um, new, new test, tasting descriptions here. It's um, well for me straight off the bat. Um, I, I am a, I am what they call a sherry monster. I uh, love a sherry whiskey. Um, the, the, sh the more sherry the better for me uh, when it comes to whiskey uh, it, it, the, the incredible sherry flavours come through so uh, there's stuff going on here yeah there's there's sherry in there in my opinion yeah there is that that dried fruits cinnamon um uh, yeah there's a raisin cinnamon? sultanas Christmas cake, uh, Christmas a, in a glass. There's a, there's a curry spice in there that you get when you. Uh, oh, I hate when you get a one that you're you're not used to and you, it's in your mind, but it's yeah, miles away. Yeah, uh, quite often I'll, I'll, what I'll try and do is liken it to something that uh, in everyday life, you know, like so as I mentioned earlier on, Christmas cake. You know, it kind of reminds me of Christmas morning and you know, that sort of slice of Christmas cake with that. Well, I'm getting a lightly spicy curry. <laughs> just to start with, so a little bit of heat and spiciness, but not more than Christmassy. Much more, yeah, yeah. Mm. There's a, there's a sort of kindness to that. Turmeric or turmeric. That's turmeric? it. Thank you, thank yeah, you, yeah. Uh, <laughs> John. <laughs> turmeric. That's what I was looking for. There's a that's turmeric great. in there. Uh, that's well, crazy. Uh, even our broken clocks right twice a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, be quiet for the rest of the, the video now. But that's exactly <laughs> it's turmeric. Yeah. It really good. Uh, that's. I don't think I've ever had that in a whiskey before. Mm. Um, so I don't know where that came from. I guess it's coming from the wood. Um, it, it can only be. Um... Did you get that or was that just a guess? No, I definitely yeah, got that. Yeah, I definitely got that. That's a strange. So yeah, so underneath that, the, the, the turmeric is up there. It's, it's almost in this, it seems to be in the hairs of my nose. In a good way. Now that I've got that, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to smell the rest of it, yes. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I'm getting lots of sultana, lots of lots of raisins, um, dried fruit, um, but spicy as well. So you got your cinnamons, which you you, you can expect from a yeah. cherry whiskey. If you were going to make a sort of mulled wine and you get your little wine uh, tied together, sort of your cinnamon sticks and whatever else you you put in, that that it's got that it's got yeah. that wee Christmassy. I wouldn't say that it's the fruit; it's more the spiciness. Different. That's really interesting. Some orangey zesty flavour to it as well. Orangey zesty note as well to it. It's seen here, um, oh, on the description here, it said, it said um, mentioned red fruits. I mean, I'm not getting... I've got a wee bit of red grape, I would say. 
Mm. Uh, just a wee bit of that, but not not not, not that juicy plum or cranberries mm -hmm. or anywhere there, but just a wee bit of sort of red grape. So almost a, you wonder sometimes again with descriptions when plums are a little bit bigger, mm. grapes are a little bit smaller, mm. and because it's a smaller flavour note, am I just envisaging smaller fruit mm. rather than? But no, because cranberries are smaller than red grapes, I'm not getting any cranberries yeah. so yet. Yeah, a little bit of red grapes. So red grape, turmeric, um, and a little bit of mulled wine spices. Mm. As usual. Brilliant, sorry. Uh, <laughs> thank you. And a three-year-old, is it a lowland or is it a highland? That's a highland, yeah. It's just, highland. it's, it, it's uh, Strathairn's just a little ways outside of Perth, in Perthshire. Mm -hmm. um, so officially highland. Um, yeah, not far away from Creef, in fact. That's really um, interesting. I, I believe when it was first uh, first um, opened, it kind of took over the uh, mantle of smallest Scotch whisky distillery yeah. in Scotland, mm -hmm. uh, away from um, Edredour, um just outside of Pit Lochry, uh, which I think they probably still claim they're the smallest uh, whisky distillery in Scotland. But um, yeah, I think uh, Strathairn and potentially now Daft Mill. Uh, do you, do you, here's, here's, here's a way aside, I don't, I don't realize. Do you know why Edredour was the smallest? I can only assume it's due to the volume of whiskey produced? I think or it was to do with the, as far footprint. as I remember, and I might be wrong and I apologise, but I think it was there was a, a minimum level size of still you could have, uh -huh. and only Edgerdower had them, and therefore they had the smallest still. So I'm not sure even if they were smallest volume producer, but, but I think uh, that's in the back of my head somewhere. Mm. Um, whenever a tour guide tells you something, I always Google it and back it up. But I think well, Edgerdower had the smallest stills, <laughs> and those regulations are now different, and you can get smaller stilled distilleries. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, the, the stills, interesting you should mention stills as well, so Strathairn, um, unusually, may not be unusual, I, I don't know, but um, Portuguese stills they have, um, quite an unusual shape. What does that mean? Um, just <laughs> we, the, 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 I think it just in general look and feel, the style. Their, their style of them, yeah. they're just different. Um, myself and my wife, uh, I went on my, uh, I'm still on a journey to try and visit every distillery in Scotland, um, uh, went up to Strathairn and um, parked in the car park and got a few funny looks as we were peering through the window of the still house <laughs> and sh sure enough and the still house is, um, is very small um, and uh, the stills are quite small as well and they're very unusual in their shape and the way they're, 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 they're made so yeah uh, and they, I believe stuff there and also make gin as well so that's sort of um, iconic maybe gin, gin still shape as well but they also produce their Spirit for the whiskey as well. So very good. Have you tasted it yet? No, not yet. Okay, not yet. You, you do that now. Talking okay. a lot about, about stills. When you're talking about unusual stills. Uh, the most unusual stills I've seen were up on the Isle of Lewis at the Avonjag Distillery, and I was just tickled. I was like, "Where, where did you get your stills? Mm. They're, they're they're like the big. They're almost like sort of the your your central heating cylinders, and then they've got a little." Um, twisted sort of arm that comes out the top, like uh, Beverly Hillbillies. They're just they're, they're surely these are uh, th these cannot be official, but uh, they did have them especially made in the old style. But they're, they're classic stills. I'll show you a couple of photos later. I'll superimpose a couple of photos in this video for you to have a little <laughs> look at them. But uh, that's what that's the, the the most intriguing stills I've seen. So it was almost like a kind of column still, or was it? Was uh, it well, um, the, the main was body sort was, of bulbous. The, the main body was just a straight cylinder. No, no, no oh. bulbous at all. Just a straight cylinder, and then the arm cranked out the top and all, uh, taking away the the spark. Wow. Yeah. So uh, really, it just as a, where did you get your stills? Mm. No weapon specially made it. Like, mm. Surely. But there you go. So. You talk about the taste. I'll okay, the taste. well, um, uh, we, speak, we spoke about red fruits, mentioned on the label about red fruits earlier on. That flavour is now coming through in the palate for me. Um, you're getting your typical sherry flavours. Um, there's a certain amount of um, uh, kind of, uh, I say this in a good way, but kind of sulfury note to that. Maybe that's where the turmeric's coming from. I don't know, but um, there is that, that, but the dry fruits are coming through again. Um, Sherry soaked raisins, that sort of thing, uh, is coming through, but definitely a red fruit strawberry note coming through there. But then there's that citrusy in the background as well. Not that dry, um, quite well rounded. Um, sweetness is coming through at the very top end and it kind of continues on. And the finish, 
I mean, I, I've, I've not had a drink since you started talking about stills there, and I'm still getting it. It's, <laughs> and for a, for a three-year-old, um, the finish is incredible. It's very, very long. I don't know if age makes any difference when it comes to finishing, but um, you would expect it to, to just disappear, but it's not. It's continuing to give. Mm. It does diminish, but slowly. It just lingers and lingers and lingers a little bit less and a little bit less as it goes. There's almost a, a bit of a plasticiness. Mm. It's, it's dried fruit, dried berries. Um, it's quite different from when the rose. That turmeric was almost a sort of mustiness, a little bit damp, um, not quite mouldy, but there and thereabouts. But you, you, you don't, I, I lose that completely. I, I don't get that at all in the mouth. From any sort of heavily sherry whiskies that I've tried in the past, you almost kind of get that rubbery. It's definitely it. rubbery, massive plastic rubbery. Uh, yeah, definitely. It's sort of that sort of that, but not in an unpleasant way. It sounds really unpleasant. It's maybe just because it's, it's not been matured long enough in the sherry cask, so mm. it's maybe got the rubberiness because it's not, it's not that full bodied sweetness. Mm. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not bad. It's, it's very interesting. It is very interesting. Yeah, and that's, that's one of the reasons why I was intrigued as well the fact that it was a a new distillery was batch number one, and it's quite reasonably priced as well. Well, I say reasonably priced, it's actually pretty expensive for a three year old. What did you pay for it? 85 pounds. Batch um, one is, uh, there's but for a, batch one. Uh, there's so much interest when a new distillery produces, yeah. especially with a, a craft based, craft sort of orientated yeah. distillery. What are they going to do different? When I grabbed the bottle after I tasted it, I wanted to see the percent, it's 46, but um, it Hit me, hit me above 50% I would say. Yeah, so. yeah, I think that's interesting as well. So, on the nose, there is a certain prickle, but, um... Mm. Hey, before I finish it all as well, we'll put some water in mm. and see, we'll see what happens. There so, where did you, where did you get this one? Uh, hard to find whiskies, um, website, um, dot, hard to find whiskies dot com. Um, it's uh, it's been a pretty good um, uh, website for me in the past for getting whiskies potentially that you might not be able to get your hands on. Mm -hmm. um, so I think stuff there and uh, the back batch one on Lights of Master Malt and other whiskey websites that are available. Um, I don't think you can get it anymore. I think it's uh, but you can still buy it on on Hard to Find Whiskies. I'm not entirely sure whether or not. It's more expensive and hard to find, so hence the reason why it's turning people off. But uh, for me, well, I mean, I mean, having um, half hours on a bottle with uh, with a good friend of mine, I think that's a great way to enjoy whiskey as well. In fact, if you have like-minded people who want to try some different whiskies, and maybe potentially the price mark is, is taking you out when eighty-five pounds isn't something I would normally buy for a whiskey that I'm going to drink. Mm -hmm. um, uh, a friend of mine, uh, we decided we're going to go half hours on it, so it makes it a little bit easier to bear. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's a nice way to enjoy whiskey that you might not necessarily be able to try. Uh, totally not. Uh, I, 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 it's not. It sounds a bit cliched, but I get genuine enjoyment sharing whiskey. It's what it's for. Yep. It's the best way to have it is to share. And if you've got a good whiskey like that last Van Lagen, we try try this, John. Oh, that's that's outstanding. It's great. The only problem is that it runs out. It does run out quickly, and that's <laughs> yeah. That's the yeah. reason that you have it. But but the, the bonus with that is that the instant it runs out, it makes space on the shelf, so yes. we can we can then add to that. So yeah, we're uh, we're we're doing okay. And then you can maybe pass it to the good lady wife, and she'll make a nice uh, lamp or something like well, that. Well, well, um, I saw your Glen Mothis lamp, which I can't. It's not on the table today. Um, Continuity might tell you that it should be here, but uh, I'm I'm here today, so <laughs> yes. you know I'm not wearing a lampshade. Um, but, you know, <laughs> not yet. Potentially, potentially try that later on. Whiskies to try. <laughs> mm. well, Very interesting. Yeah. Thanks for bringing that. It's, uh, I mean, it's not something I would ever think about, look at, go for. It's not that I would say no ever got a handed one, but mm. it's a, a very interesting whiskey. It's uh, it's got a lot a lot going for it. I think so. A lot about so. it. Very good and a very nice after taste. I'm going to enjoy that for a few minutes. Right, Indeed. chuck it back down on the floor and we'll go on to our next one.